Hello everybody, this is King David back at you with another video. This time I'm going to be talking about the great things of Korea that I've experienced during my time here. So if you remember in my previous video, I talked about how uh, I'm moving to Japan and how I've almost lived here for 10 years now. And I just wanted to talk about the many awesome things about this country. I could talk for hours and hours about the positives of Korea, but I just wanted to narrow it down for the sake of time to a few points. It's funny how I'm making this list considering when I first came here, um, I talked about my previous previous video as well, how uh, I just hated this country, I just despised it <laughs> when I first came here as a just immature high school kid. After some growing up and some adjusting and whatnot, I have come to love this country and I'm going to miss it very much. That being said, here are some things that I like about Korea. But the first great thing about Korea, number one, is its convenience. Basically, everything you need is right outside. Everything you need is just like a block or two away. At most, you're, you would have to take a bus ride or a subway ride. Whether it's groceries, or appliances or restaurants. I know that America has Amazon Prime, but here in Korea, they have Coupang. And that's like, well, yeah, the collection of items isn't as expansive as Amazon. You know, generally everything you need is right there on the site. And not only that, most of the items on there, if it says rocket shipping, then it gets to your house like the next day. And another thing under the umbrella of convenience is transportation. The transportation system here is done so well. You know exactly where you're going and you know when your next train or next car or next bus is coming. Very affordable too, not that expensive. Taxis are pretty cheap compared to Uber. The subway map of Seoul, for example, it can be very overwhelming. There's so many different stops. Um, but if you get an app, like Kakao Subway or Kakao Metro, then it simplifies it for you. You just put in where you're coming from to your final destination on the app, and it just tells you how long it's gonna take and what trains you need to take, where you need to transfer. It's done very well. Compare this to, I don't know, like, LA, for example. Like when I took public transportation in LA, it was a nightmare. Yes, you have Google Maps, but I took the bus one time. I waited almost like an hour for the next bus to come. And Google Maps didn't tell me anything about when the next bus was coming and what direction the particular bus I needed to take was going. It was just a whole mess. If only America just adopted the transportation system here in Korea, it would just be a lot more simpler. Number two is the cost of living. And this is somewhat related to convenience. In terms of housing, housing costs very affordable. And yes, yeah, you need uh, what they call key money or a deposit money. It's a lump sum of money that you deposit before you enter a house. And once you end your contract, you get that money back. It's a lot of money, uh, a lot of places, most places generally require almost 10,000 bucks. In those situations, you can get a loan, or in most cases, your company will provide that for you. Another thing that's very affordable is food. Food is so cheap. And considering that there's no tax and there's no tip, most meals here, maybe around 10 bucks is what it'll cost you to get a nice, you know, just satisfying meal. And to tie this in with a previous point that I mentioned of convenience, most of the food that you want, as I said before, just right in front of you, like a step or two away. And if you're lazier than that, you can order food. You can order McDonald's, you can order pizza, fried chicken. The world is at your oyster. At your oyster? The world is your oyster? I forget how the saying goes. Convenience is king here, is what I'm trying to say. Number three, a lot of the workers here in Korea, most of them work very hard. And not only that, they work very efficiently. In terms of the working hard part, uh, it's almost to the people's detriment that they work very hard in what they do. Yes, Korea is very notorious for being workaholics, but you know, the work that they do, it's very efficient. Like, what do I mean by that? Whatever job they do, they do it quickly and they do it very well. Like, let's say at a restaurant you order something. The service you get is awesome. They're very nice and they're very accommodating and their service is top notch. And considering the fact that they don't receive tip is just crazy. Or let's say something in your house breaks down and you need to fix it. If you call the person, there will be a worker there right away and fix it right away. Also like building projects. Uh, if there's a building that needs to be built, Korean builders build like freaking Pikmin or something. Uh, they just build that thing like in almost like a week and it'll be done. Or let's say a shop closes down and a store or a new restaurant takes its place. 
that new place, it's going to be there in like a couple of days. Not only are Korean workers efficient, uh, but I feel like because of that, a lot of the products that they make are efficient as well. For example, the internet. The internet here is super, super fast. Like the cars they make or the technology that they make here, it, it's just state of the art almost. Except for that debacle Samsung had about their note phones exploding. But other than that, most Korean products, top of the line. Number four is the country's nationalism or pride. Korea is a very proud country in a good way. For example, if you turn on the TV, all the sports channels, if it's like the MLB, it's always going to feature Korean people. It's going to feature people like Chu Shin Su or Liu Hyun Jin. Or it's always going to show Son Heung Min highlights playing for Tottenham. Or if the Olympics are on or just any other major sporting event. Uh, not only will you see the Korean athlete being featured, you'll see just a ton of Korean supporters, even though it's like a foreign country, a ton of Korean supporters there just to cheer that person on. Understandably so, they want to feature Korean people because you know that's what's gonna get the ratings, that's what people care about in this country or whatever country you go to, like you know, America, they're gonna feature American athletes, or Japan, they're gonna feature Japanese athletes on TV. But Korea takes it to a whole nother level. Like you can also see in the World Cup, Korea is just passionate as can be is you'll see the height of Korean pride during those moments in the World Cup or the Olympics stuff events like that Koreans just fill up all these restaurants or these parks or um, these walkways just to watch a huge TV and just to support their country like it's absolute bedlam when like the Korean team wins a game or they score a goal. I'm not saying other countries are passionate. I'm sure that they are. Yeah, it's just one thing that stuck out to me was like the great lengths Korea goes to really just showcase and display their pride for their nation. It's crazy how even though Korea is such a small country, it just try to showcase or display themselves in such a great way through these kinds of events. They make the world feel who they are. And the last thing that I want to talk about is a something called chung. It's one of those Korean words that's hard to explain in English. The way I define it, it's kind of like hospitality plus love plus compassion. So if you come to this country, yeah, granted, there will be some people who are kind of anti-foreigner, who are kind of racist. Don't see those people as the majority. Don't see those people representing everyone. People here, they're very nice. They're very hospitable, I should say. Uh, they go the extra mile into providing for people's needs. If you're hungry, a lot of people will just not only give you a meal that just fills you up, they give you a meal that makes you feel like you hate yourself. They give you so much food and they give you more food beyond that. <laughs> if you get to know a group of people, like the bond that you form between them is just almost like you're a family. There's this just warmth that people provide here. Um, you just can't put it in words. A certain charm that people give out that makes you feel like uh, just this camaraderie or this just companionship that you feel between people. I don't know if that all made sense. Again, I mean, the word itself is just hard to explain. It's something you will know once you come here and experience it yourself. That does it for my video today. I know that these points are also applicable to other countries, like to a degree, other countries have these strengths as well. And these are just some of the biggest takeaways that I had from this country and that I wanna to share to you guys and hopefully you guys feel the same way. But yeah, if you're outside this country, come visit. Uh, it's a great place to live in. Although there are some blemishes there, it's no country is perfect in any means. I hope that you get to come here and experience these great things that I'm talking about. So if you like videos like this, be sure to give a like, comment, and subscribe to this channel. Feel free to leave in the comments below what other great things you like about Korea. That being said, this is King David signing off and telling you all to stay royal, my lords.